Dan Borsi with WorthPoint.com. We're here with uh, Mr. Richard Perlman from El Cerrito, California. Richard's a dealer in the ancient coins here. Um, I run into him quite a bit in my travels out on the road at coin shows and conventions and whatnot. Let's start it off, Richard. Tell us how you got into dealing with ancient coins. What caught my eye when I was nine years old was a Roman silver denarius that was at Marshall Fields in Chicago, where I grew up. And I saved my allowance for two months. I actually still have examples of that, or an example of that coin, just much nicer than I can afford as a kid. With ancient collectors, you get uh, almost completely a really intelligent, thoughtful group of people uh, who take great pleasure both in the coins and often in the research they do. As a result, each coin is like a snowflake. There will be no other that's precisely the same. You have a nice sampling of some, some world coins here. One of the emperors that everybody knows is Julius Caesar. This is a portrait denarius. Uh, that's the denomination that was made in 44 BC in a period uh, no earlier than a month and a half before he actually was killed. This was probably one of the things that got him killed because you didn't put your image on coins in those days. He made a very strong statement, uh, put himself in a place that most Roman nobility felt was uh, absolutely wrong. Everybody knows of Alexander the Great, who was so revered in the ancient community that coins with the same image as on his coins were made for uh, 250 years after he died. And this is one, though, that's, that existed in the last year of his life to six years later. It's called a tetradram. On the obverse, you've got the god Heracles, which we think of as Hercules, and he's got a lion skin headdress that commemorates the god Hercules slaying the Nemean lion. It's actually a town in Greece that still exists. Uh, and very high relief, beautiful stuff. It's just a beautiful coin. And you can see there's virtually no wear. This is a near new, near uncirculated coin. And here you've got, on the reverse, Zeus, the god Zeus, which was, he was the top of the, the food chain in gods, uh, holding an eagle. He's on a throne. There's a little symbol on the left-hand side in the, what's called the field, the open area. And with that and a dedicated reference, I could find out precisely where and when this was made. The first year this coin was made was the year he died. This is a coin with the image of Emperor Augustus, and who's very well known. He had been chosen by Julius Caesar to be his successor. And so he was emperor from 27 BC to 14 AD, so that includes the early life of Christ. Capricorn's on the reverse of this coin, and Capricorn, in effect, is moving the, the world, the globe. The Romans did not see the world as a, a flat, flat table. They saw it and understood it as a globe, something that kind of got lost for a while after them. Uh, again, it's in a, a beautiful kind of late Greek style, and it's for people who collect uh, the toning that it has picked up. The silver is picked up, really adds to the eye appeal of this coin. Uh, in fact, I saw it and I just thought, boy, I hope I hope I can get it for a reasonable price because it just caught my eye. Dan, this is this is one for your collection. This this is a large bronze coin of Cleopatra the seventh. That Cleopatra made in Alexandria, Egypt during her lifetime. This is a lifetime portrait. It wasn't done to make her a flattering figure or a goddess. This is the real woman, one of the, the best politicians in world history. This is much better than you usually see. And on the reverse, you've got this spelling along here is her name, Cleopatra. It's rarely seen on this coin because of the wear and so forth. 
there certainly has to have been one a bit better somewhere, you know, or a couple, but this would be toward the top of the heap. You, you look around at some of the U.S. coins that are 100 years old that are selling for tens of thousands of dollars, and to me, as, as a novice in world coins, I think it's a, a neat concept that I could come over to a dealer like you and have a coin that is 1,700 years old for a fraction of the price of some of this stuff in the United States that's only 100 years old for sale. Well, I guess, it is, I guess if, I, if I explain my price by your price by year, that would make them seem very cheap. I would say there's a minimum of 15,000 different types of ancient coins, and then within those 15,000, uh, lots of sub-varieties and even changes from one die maker to another. And it's, it's been a pleasure, and thank you for sharing this stuff with me. I really appreciate it. From WorthPoint.com, I'm Dan Borson.